Well, let's get more on our top story now. A woman who was only 15 years old when she was taken by Syrian security forces and put in prison has told Sky News of the endless cycle of torture that she witnessed. Amnesty International says jails run by President Assad's regime are where the government quietly slaughters its own people. Joining us now is Abdulaziz Al-Mashi, co-founder of the Syria Solidarity Campaign. Thanks for your time. You have direct second-hand experience of what goes on in these jails. Perhaps you can tell us about it. Yes, uh, my uh, uni mate, uh, Majid Mar'i, uh, he was captured by the Syrian uh, security forces back in 2011 uh, because he posted some comments on Facebook criticizing the government. And he was tortured to death. In 2015, his family were informed he died in a prison. And his body wasn't handed over to his uh, family because, uh, you know, they used torture uh, against him. And they just didn't want uh, any photos of his body to be uh, published to, uh, uh, to the world. And uh, if you look at the Syrian regime, uh, this isn't something new. The Syrian regime has been using torture in, in jails uh, systematically even before uh, the start of the revolution. Uh, so many people have been um, uh, tortured to death in Syria. Uh, the Amnesty International report uh, was talking about 13,000 people who were hanged in Assad jails. And we have Dr. Uh, Abbas Khan, for example, who was a British surgeon. He went to Syria to help the Syrian people, and he was captured. And then he was uh, tortured to death in, in the Assad uh, uh, jail. Uh, Assad uh, and his security forces have captured so many doctors, uh, uh, so many media activists, students, anyone who uh, opposed them politically in Syria, unfortunately. It did start with rebel fighters being put in these prisons originally, but are you convinced now that at these prisons that we hear there are more of, as you referenced Amnesty International's report, 13,000 in Sadnaya, are you pretty convinced that they're all civilians or most of them are? Well, the, the majority of the people who are in jail are relatives of, of fighters of, uh, who fight in the FSA or uh, civilians who uh, were protesting peacefully in the revolution. Uh, we remember when the revolution started back in 2011, it was peaceful for almost six months. And by September or, uh, or October 2011, Every single jail in, in Syria was, was packed with, uh, with civilians who were peacefully uh, protesting against the Syrian regime. Even football stadiums in Aleppo and Damascus were used as uh, detention centers to, to keep people uh, there so they don't go out to the street and to protest against the Syrian regime. Amnesty International is talking about 13,000 people. We believe the number is much uh, uh, more than that because we are talking about more than 700,000 people in Syria who, uh, uh, who have been missing. We don't know about, about their whereabouts. We believe they are detainees. And we don't know how many of them uh, are killed or still alive. Horrific stories coming to light with that report last week and our interview that we've heard this afternoon. Uh, what hopes do you have in terms of potential repercussions for the regime? We've seen this happen time and time again during wartime that civilians are killed in prisons. What hopes do you have for justice? Well, this is not the only war crimes Assad has been committing in Syria. Assad has used chemical weapons to target uh, residential populated areas. Assad has been using unguided bombs to kill civilians and to target hospitals and school in Aleppo and uh, other cities in Syria. Assad has used even food as a weapon uh, of war. All of these are war crimes. The international community has been absolutely doing nothing to stop him, like torturing prisoners uh, to death is just one of Assad's war crimes. And we can see to, uh, Boris Johnson, for example, uh, last week he was talking about uh, that Assad can run for re-election, despite the fact he has been committing all of these atrocities. We lost faith in the international community. What we want, we want justice. We want, uh, 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 we want peace. We want Syria where Syrians can live in, in peace. 
we want the international community to take their responsibility and uphold the international law in Syria. Hopefully, they will do something to stop those atrocities because we had enough. We heard so many horrific stories, so many war crimes have been committed uh, by the Assad regime, and the international community is totally silent and turn up blind eyes from those atrocities, unfortunately. Abdul Aziz, thanks for joining us on Sky News. Thank you.